I'm Renee Noor, model, creative director, founder of Global Women Wealth Warriors, Wellness Hub, and GW3 Magazine. I dedicated my life and devoted my career into helping women and girls to achieving their goals. I've been passionate about empowering women and enriching men. This opportunity in working with the Global Women Wealth Warriors have afforded me the pleasure of traveling outside of the country to be a support unit, most importantly, to help impact and change lives. Our ultimate purpose is to help others to become whole from finance, spiritual, mental, as well as physical. We know there are challenges and obstacles to get you to the next level. However, it's time for you to level up, boss up, and welcome to Power to Soar. Welcome, 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 beautiful family. Oh my goodness, yes. I am Renee Noor, your host, the founder of the Global Women Wealth Warriors, and it brings me so much joy to be in front of you today. And yes, Power to Soar Leadership Conference, we're looking forward to our fifth annual that's going to take place on August 18th through the 19th, I'm sorry, 19th through the 21st. Guys, we want you to be a part of that experience, but we are now officially live. Woo! If you're in the clubhouse, you need to go ahead on and put a message out. GW3, they're officially live. If you are on Facebook, woo! We're so happy that you're on Facebook. This gives you the opportunity to see all of the energy and all of the items that we've been doing inside of the clubhouse. We're bringing it to your house. And not only is today a special day, Thanks to Gracian, Linnell, Malika Starr, Miss Stars, Tina, as well as we had Mr. Tyrone Poole in the clubhouse. They were talking about gratitude. We have so much to be grateful for. That's what this Tuesdays are, our Tuesdays are always about. Not only are we thankful, but we know for sure a lot of people didn't get an opportunity of waking up today. And because of that reason, we always want to make sure not only do we stay humble, we stay grounded. And oh my goodness, we keep those people in our heart as well. If you are in the clubhouse and you're watching us live now, I need you to put some green hearts in the chat. That's right. If you are in the clubhouse and you know how we have those chats going on there, I would love for you to put some chats also, put some um, hearts in the chat as well, guys. This is not only going to be an amazing, thankful Tuesday, but we're going to talk about some of that mindset as well. It's important for us to make sure we're not only just balancing, but talking about things that really are impacting the lives of souls everywhere. Remember, about two years ago, we didn't have this thing called Clubhouse. I didn't have the opportunity of getting to know all of these amazing souls. But guess what? Now that we have Clubhouse, we actually have an amazing community. Not only do we have an amazing community, we have a powerful tribe. And I want to introduce you to some ladies that not only are they blazing the universe with their energy and their charismatic ways, but also they love humanity. They absolutely love humanity. So again, if you're on the clubhouse, we want you to chime in with us so you can see us. We're on YouTube as well as we're on Facebook. I want to make sure that you know we're in both of those areas. We want to not only connect with you, we love the interaction and the engagement, and we want to ensure that we're going to keep you in involved as well. So without further ado, how about if we introduce one of our amazing beauties? I've had the opportunity of meeting her in person. Now twice, that's right, twice. Miss Mary Kim Barkas, not only she's a phenomenal mother, she's also a lady that's leading the way. She has a beautiful, handsome son. We call him Mr. Desi. That's right, Mr. Desi. And she's just doing impeccable things. She is one of the founders of Keep Seat. She's been a sponsor of many of our events, and we're proud and so happy to have her be a part of us today. So without further ado, Miss Mary Kim Barkas, come on out, beauty. Hello, everyone. Hey. Thank you, Miss oh. Renee. I'm so you grateful. So, oh, my God. You're so beautiful. So, so <laughs> Thank beautiful. Thank you. 
So you are, are so you. Welcome. I have tears in my eyes with that Aww. introduction. Thank you so much. It's you an honor are, to be here today. Yes, you are a breath of fresh air. You're just, oh, you're glowing. You are truly, truly glowing. Thank you. And let's come on and bring out our next beauty. Oh, this woman here, Mary Kim, I've watched her do her whole 360. You know, okay. she goes into the streets of the clubhouse with the greatest joy to have Miss Janet Alvarado all the way from Las Vegas to be joining us today. Miss Janet Gorgeous, are you there? Bring your beautiful self on out here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. Oh, my goodness. I want everybody in the clubhouse, if you could see our beautiful faces, please put some green hearts in the chat. You know, this is our family. Oh, my goodness. How are you doing, Miss Janet? I want to hear your voice. I not only want to hear your voice, I want you to scream as loud as you ah! can. I I can go. Go. Yes. My mouth hurt me, but I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys on mute. But I am so excited and nervous at the same time. This is an honor for sure. Thank you so much for, you, for pulling me out of my comfort zone and getting me to take action because you're my angel. Oh my God, this club is my angel. These women are power and I just love it being here. I so love it. Oh my God, we got the green hearts going right now. We got the green Ooh, hearts. Guys. So I want you cool. all to understand the importance of being able to have an amazing community that supports you. Miss Janet, I'm just going to give you one of these big old hugs because I've watched you beautiful just truly transform. <laughs> it's been like a year now. Yeah. Yes. It's been over a year since we've been able to connect with each other. Since today, it's all about gratitude. And, you know, we talk about that all the time. Tell everyone, what are you what are you so grateful for right now? Please share with us. And for those in the, um, in the clubhouse, if you think everybody looks beautiful, go ahead on and flash your mics <laughs> as well. Oh, my goodness. What are you so grateful for, please? First of all, I am so grateful to be here today. I am so grateful for Global Women Wealth Warriors. I am so grateful for all the beautiful souls in here. I, I'm just full of gratitude. And you know, gratitude has changed my life. Literally, just learning to be grateful on a daily basis. Every day, all day, just looking around and being grateful for the things I have and not focusing on the things I don't have. Let's not focus on those things. Let's just focus on here and now and what we have in our possession. Because the more you focus on the gratitude, the more gratitude will come. Believe it, because look it, I am, <laughs> I am proof. Just the journey I've been taking because of gratitude, uh, it's brought me people, it's brought me the opportunities. Look it, I'm here live. Oh. <laughs> it's amazing, it's amazing. So be grateful every day, thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love your energy, Janet. You know, <laughs> you have so much good energy, so much, you know, that pos that positive aura about you. And I know for, sh for sure you, Mary Kim, you know, I enjoy just hearing your voice in the morning. Oh, of dear. course, we are always rising and grinding with Breakfast with Champion. At the same token, you just have such a uniqueness about what everything that you do. You are just that woman we all need to connect with. So you're over there in New York City. Share with everyone what is it and why are you so grateful, please? <sighs> Thank you, Miss Renee. Janet, you're a ray of sunshine and I love seeing you live. It's so beautiful. Um, I'm just grateful. I learned at a very young age when I lost both my parents um, one went to heaven, one went, uh, had gained handcuffs, that life is truly precious. And along that journey, I was grateful to be alive, grateful to experience all the things I've experienced and not take anything for granted. And through that journey of self-love and self-care and trying to improve myself, because I was trying to live up to prove, not prove, but honor my mother, you know, because I only known her in this real life um, up until the age of 12. And so it was my way of like showing up as my best self in that moment to honor my mother because she meant so much to me and losing her, I, you know, um, 
I didn't have to ha that time frame with her except for 12 years. And I'm so grateful for that. So I've learned, I've been practicing now for over 20 years. And the beauty of gratitude is you can see the tiniest light in the darkest days. You will never have a bad day in your life. And I say that because I've gone through the journey and I'm so grateful for it. being here, meeting all these amazing warriors. You guys inspire me every single day. But like we're alive, we're breathing and I believe in God and God's not done with me yet. So if you're here and no matter what you've gone through, you're not done yet. You have a lifelong journey to continue. So I'm just grateful. And uh, meeting you, Miss Renee, has changed my life. Thank you. Oh, everybody, let's go ahead and give a big hug for both of these powerhouses. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, guys. You know, I feel as if we've all have gone through something, right? Yes. And one of the greatest things that we can do is not only have that moment to reflect upon it, but also be able to say, you know what, God, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for giving me those life lessons. Thank you for giving me the ability to get through. And also thank you, Father God, for allowing me to heal. You know, we have to say that, guys, because a lot of people don't understand the importance of two words, or I would say one word, it seems as if it's really long, okay? Forgiveness. Forgiveness is a powerful word. And as we are continuously growing into, you know, I always say our better version of ourselves, we have to learn how to forgive some of those moments in our lives that we just didn't know. And in addition to that, we have to also forgive those who have hurt us along the way. I'm grateful yes. for all of my life mistakes for my life lessons, okay? And I'm still learning, guys. I'm yeah. still learning every yeah. day. I say, God, thank you for using me. I'm a work in progress. I didn't get that one right. But you know what? He says, just stay being consistent, Renee. And I'll say that to you all. Stay being consistent, right? Keep also fueling that energy and keep on attracting everything you desire. We are in this perfect place and it's called life and because we have the ability to impact humans wherever we go we grow every time we latch on to new humans every day oh my goodness i had the greatest conversation this morning with one of our gyms miss jane and she's all the way over there in germany and everybody loves lanelle that's right Linnell, my goodness, I can hear her voice any time of the day. She brings so much energy, right? She brings so much energy to us. And she's such, she's such that healing person as well. We call her our soul coach. And in addition to that, I mean, the energy from Stars Tina yesterday. Oh, my goodness. On fire, on fire. Guys, what's so great about each and every last one of us? I'm grateful that each one of you all have something so unique, something so different that just only allow us to keep on falling right back in love with each other. That's right. I said it because I know I love myself. And I know that's something that a lot of people don't really understand the importance of just loving themselves. So therefore they can also share that type of love. This is a big month for us. Not only is it a big month, this is all about that whole focus with that mental awareness, right? Mental health awareness. And with that, we brought a special guest. Not only this special guest is going to help us to really harmonize and really understand some moments. This is her sweet spot. She also is a GW3 warrior. Yes, she is. We're so <laughs> grateful to have Dr. Laura Cobb with us. My goodness. Powerful, powerful woman. And you know what, guys? Let's go ahead on and raise up our hands for Dr. Laura Cobb. Woo! 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 What? Thank you, thank you, thank you. So excited to be here. Hi. Oh, my God. Look at Hello, you. Renee. Hello, everyone. Hello, Kim. Hello, ladies. Hello, Janet. It's wonderful to meet you, finally. Yes, yes. We're so honored to have you here with us, Dr. Laura Cobb. This is such your sweet spot. You know, yes. when it comes down to mental, we always say it's important for us to have that self-care and that self-love. 
but also as a point of just that mental health. This is your area. And we're so delighted to have your part of this. So therefore we can kind of like have more of that healing process as well. Just within the past two years, what have been some of the things that you've experienced in this space? Please share. What? In this space, uh, within this space for me is my skin. Cause I can be with me today. That I don't feel like I want to cut my skin off or just rip it off. I didn't want to get out of me. I actually wanted to stay stuck and put place only to the extent that that mindset that we often get into. Sometimes that mindset doesn't often work for us when we get stuck in the muck. And this this little guy, he came into my life, a beautiful little boy, Aww. special needs. And he loves on me all the time when I need it. He knows I need it. And I got to tell you, I'm having a little, ear, not imposter syndrome, but my little issue because I'm like, oh my God, I know the color changed. What up with that? So I'm having a little like judgment in my head and that's okay today because I know what? She wasn't invited. So she can go ahead and have a little seat in the chair over there and I'll get back to her if I'm available later. And then usually she just ends up leaving. What has helped for me in the last two years is knowing my worth and that when the entire world stopped, I kept going, that I could continue to move and, and go through and live from and not in any trauma that I had and realize that I am enough. I don't have to be smart enough, good enough, happy enough, pretty enough, rich enough, any of that, just to be, to breathe and to wake up every morning and say, good God morning. Instead, well, rather than saying that, say, good morning, God. And that's a joy today. Wow. I like that, guys. You know, I really do like that. You know. One of the things you talk about being able to just know your value and know your worth, we talk about that. You know, that's something that's so important, especially, I say this, especially for women, because women always are so giving their power away, thinking that someone's going to elevate them or thinking that they need to have someone's approval. If I'm speaking to you, please put it in the chat. If you've been waiting for someone to approve what you do, if you've been a part of that, I want you to go ahead and put some 10, 10, 10s in the chat. <laughs> Dr. Laura, is that what I'm talking about? Come on now. Is that something that okay, you've experienced people been waiting for approval? This Dan Prank, preach. What I'm saying is why would I want to give my power away? How you can't make me feel something. You can't make me do or say or think anything. Why would I want to say you made me feel this way? Look what you did. You did this. You made me. Are you kidding me? Why would I want to give someone that power and control to say you made me? I take control of my life. I'm in power here. Is it an internal or an external locus of control? I'm not giving that away. If I blame it on the other, anything other than myself, that's scary. Why? It's scary for when I when I take ownership of it because then I'm the blame. Well, how about if I'm never to blame? I just take accountability and responsibility. And there's never a fail. It's just the first attempt in learning. That's all it is. Because not one single person here is sitting here today because we we did fail to walk at some point and we failed to run. We had to learn to crawl. And when we know better, we can do better. So I encourage you to suit up, stand up, show up and speak up Own your truth, own who you are, take ownership of who you are and your life and your love, your feelings and your day. Why? Cause you got this. Ooh, you know, I love you saying that you got this. Even one of our uh, other warrior Camille Jones, she says, we got this. I got this. That's sort of like her tagline. And I just absolutely love how you just poured that into us. You know, we got a full room in the house right now in the clubhouse. And I know for sure, Miss Gracian, she's not only been helping people to focus on what they're grateful for. You know, this is what this whole day is about. It's the gratitude room. I want you to share with us, Dr. Um, Dr. Laura Cobb, what are things that you are grateful for? Because you are a powerhouse. You are changing lives. You're moving mountains out of the way wherever you go. When you touch lives, it's like, whoa, we had a little bit of that Dr. Cobb. So uh, share with us. What are you I wish I could for? sing. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful that I got, I have a, I'm grateful that I have a bed today because why? Six years ago, I was homeless. I was on the streets of Chicago and I know what it's like to, to actually look for a place to sleep. And I please, I beg you, I tell, I, I often encourage people never denigrate yourself if you left your car open overnight because you may have just given someone a bed to sleep in. And I mean that deliberately. I'm grateful that I have a place to rest my head. I'm grateful that I have a can of corn in the in the cupboard. I'm grateful that I got this little guy who's special needs and just can't but love on me because he was homeless too. I'm grateful I have people I can speak with. I'm grateful that it's okay to be in my skin today and to sit down and receive because I'm a human being, not a human doing. Do, 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 do. What does that mean? I can't be in me. Be in me so I can be. I want you to be so fully fabulous of yourself and so full of yourself that you cannot help but nourish others from the overflow because that's all we got. 
when we stay still for a moment, then maybe we can listen. However, when that silence is never quiet, that's the tough part. And so just like you said, Miss Renee, I want you to rise up. I wish I could sing better. Rise up high like the day and I rise up. Oh, I could go on. I love that song. Yes. Move mountains, move mountains. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Everybody in the clubhouse, if you love Rise Up, come on, flash your mics. Come on now. I am so in. Yeah, they're flashing their mics. Oh my goodness, guys. If you are not plugged in with us, seeing us live, you have to see this, guys. This is like a picture perfect right now. We have Dr. Laura Cobb. We have the amazing Miss Mary Kay Farkas, alongside Mary Kim Farkas, alongside <laughs> with Miss Janice Alvarado, guys. I want you not only to see us, make sure you go to the YouTube channel as well as our um, Facebook Live. We're everywhere right now. And you know what's so great? I really want us to take the time. I want to know where you are from, Dr. Laura Cobb. You know, growing up, share with us, in, a, in addition to, like you said, homelessness. Mm -hmm. Some people are afraid to even face that. But I love how you overcame that. And maybe just share with us, sometimes people are still holding on to some of those past traumas and don't know how to let those things go. Can you please give us some guidance in that area? We'd love to. Yeah, know. very briefly. I'm from Chicago, Shy Shy Town. And I know when I was 30 or in third grade, I changed my grade in school and I, I failed listening. Yeah, I failed listening. And so I, I failed at the last quarter. My parents said, if you get in trouble, and I failed it again. I changed my grade, spent the entire summer in my room. And I wonder, did anyone care? Did anyone hear me crying? Do they even realize that I'm here ever? And whenever I feel cut off, when my voice is stifled, I get upset. And then right when that trigger start, starts, if I, if I communicate and react based on that trigger, I go back to that eight-year-old little girl. I'm not that eight-year-old little girl today. I know better. I do better. So I have choices that I make and I shift my mind instead of being set with, well, I'm just going to cry until I'm going to ma manipulate and self-sabotage and, and try to hurt and control other people. That's not helpful. So when I pause and just take a breath and sit in me, I'm not reacting. I'm responding because I know better. It's hard work. It's simple. It's not easy. Neither was driving a car. Get over it. You work hard for what you want. Are you happy? Or do you want to be right? I'd rather be happy today. Mm, powerful, powerful. You know, one of our other warriors, Miss Malika Starr, you know, now when you know better, you could do better. And that's something that's so resonating with all of us. And I want to tell you, thank you for having the courage. Thank you for having the strength and also that inner, that inner strength, that power, you know, yeah. that is something that really is important for not only women, but I would say, especially women. Okay, especially women. We have a large organization and we're grateful to have our men, but sometimes we have to talk a little bit different to the ladies. And, you know, as I look in the room right now, Maria, I see you. Renee, I see you. Juliana, I see you. Tanya, I see you. Again, it's so important for us to find that sweet spot. So therefore, not only is when we go through these moments, you have a community that can support you in that process. Now, I know the ladies are here as well, and they may want to pour into you while we're also having Ms. Gracian see if someone else want to ask a question to you as well. So, Miss, of course, Ms. Mark, Ms. Mary Kim, like, please, please, please let me go. <laughs> so, Mary Kim, go right on in, beautiful. I will. Uh, Laura, nice knowing you a little bit more. I follow you on Clubhouse, but hearing your story, like, thank you for your vulnerability and bravery for sharing. Um, you're so right on so many levels and your strength just exudes you. And my brother's been talking about mental illness and being homeless. My brother was diagnosed in his early 20s um, with multiple um, mental illnesses due to trauma that he experienced as a child. And because he was unable to know what's the best thing for him in certain points and self-medicating, he chose for many years to live on the street. And it is not an easy journey and it's a hard thing to get out of. So I first want to say, I'm so proud of you for finding that strength and that belief in yourself that you can do anything and that you decided to make that choice, even if it's hard, but you're here today, not on the street, grateful for what you have, your special needs dog and a bed and 
corn in the in the in the cupboard like that's what gratitude is it's the little things and you know accepting who you were in your journey because you are who you are today because of that and so i'm just loving to get to know you a little bit more thank you for sharing Absolutely. She, oh, she got this heart out. <laughs> I love it. Guys, you have to see Dr. Laura is putting this a beautiful heart up. She's like, you heart me. You heart me. I love it. Yes. Miss Janet. Dr. Laura Cobb, first of all, it's nice to finally see you in person. Oh, well, on video. <laughs> Can't wait to meet you in person and your journey. Um, it's not what happens to, uh, it's not what happens to us. It, it's, ah, I gotta miss that. <laughs> they don't happen to us, they happen for us. Let me get that straight. And, um, and for myself, uh, my life journey after um, having an aneurysm, almost dying and realizing that, you know, it was a gift for what happened to me became a gift because I was able to uh, discover who I am, discover what it was that I needed in my life at the time. Life is precious for sure. And a lot of people, it takes something tragic for us to finally change the mindset. And it's unfortunate that it had to go that far, but I'm thankful for it. And I've learned from it and we, that's what we do. We learn from our mistakes. So let's not keep repeating them and grow from them. So you were so right when you said you appreciate the head of cord in your cupboard because I appreciate the carpet I have under my feet, <laughs> the dogs that are sitting under my desk. <laughs> I appreciate them so much the love that they give me on a daily basis and um, unconditional love at that. Oh, and your kitty cat right there telling you, I got you, mom. I got you. I'm here for you. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Laura. I'm getting mama. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. Dr. Laura. <laughs> you've been able to just express yourself so um, candid with us. And as all the ladies, you know, just, we are grateful for your honesty, your transparency. Can you share for those who are listening right now, not only in the clubhouse, but also on YouTube, as well as on our Facebook and all across the world, what are some steps that could truly help you in the process of dealing with that mental illness? Share with us. We really want to know what are some of the steps to help us or to help others as well. What helped me along in the process of recovering? Or even for those who are those looking who are. to yeah, oh. some benefits, some, um, yeah, some life because, lessons. You gave us your life lessons. So now maybe some steps of what they can do in order for them to overcome. And I know I'm, each person have a case by case, you know, situation is going to be totally different, but maybe you can well. provide some insight. I can provide a general because everyone is specific. Everyone has their own story for sure. All I know is that I'm a hope pusher. I push hope. What does that mean? Is that when there gets to a point, when it gets to a point where you're hoping, you're holding on until that pain ends, when is it going to end? But you push forward through hope and you're pushing, you push, you persist until something happens. And I do not, I mean that you continue on. It's like Rocky, big hero for my childhood still. Not the, not the fights, the training, the montages. And to push through, life is going to hurt you. It's, it's just the extent of how do you cope with it? Because when we cope with our lives in a way that served us only when we were children, we're not children anymore. And to revert to that's not helpful. So my one, my one suggestion would be is to hold your hand out because with that hope, help one person elevate, help one person every day. There are people who will listen if you continue to seek out. Because when you stand next to me, I refuse to stand if you're forced to kneel. 
All I know how to do is hand, hold out your hand. There are people. And if you need, you can contact me and any of these fabulous women who are on this stage right now and anybody who's listening to Clubhouse right now. I know the people who gravitate towards you, Miss Renee, are the folks that I want to be around. And so when you align yourself, when you speak up and you align yourself with others who are like-minded, those who matter, they don't mind about you. But those who are minding your business, do they really matter? No. Align yourself with those who allow their arms to stretch out so you can take a, a, a stand up. Wow. I need everyone in the clubhouse, YouTube, Facebook, let's put some green hearts down right there for Dr. Laura Cobb. You know, not only is she just such a genuine person, you know, we can just feel your energy through this screen, Dr. Laura Cobb. And it's amazing how you have such a, a uh, I would say an aura about you, there's a glow. And we know it's because you called it already. You're the hope warrior. Guys, let's give it up for Love our hope it. warrior. Woo! That was yes! powerful. Everybody in the clubhouse, we want to give it up for the hope warrior. Yes. <laughs> yeah, everybody's cheering for you, hope warrior. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I want to know, Gracian, maybe we have um, individuals in the clubhouse who may, who may want to ask Dr. Laura a question. I think that'll be a really good time for us to do that. If you have a question for Dr. Laura Cobb, please flash your mics. Come on, mm -hmm. flash your mics and let's ask Dr. Cobb a question. All right. We have several, Dr. Cobb. Okay, so Dale, I saw you flash your mic. Go ahead, Dale. Take it away. First of all, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be in this clubhouse. This is my first time even um, attending this uh, this thing. But I want to but I want to ask Dr. Laura something. What kind of music do you like? Wonderful. So Dale, guys, he's a guy. Yes, we love when the men come to the club room as well. He is so grateful that you are here. He wants to know, Dr. Laura Cobb, what type of music do you like, Beauty? Well, it's raining men in here. Uh, let's Woo! see. <laughs> you know, I, I prefer it's, it's easier to say what I don't like only because I consider it's like it's like the melting pot. It's like a bowl of chili that you can't really differentiate any taste or flavor. It's all one good big glob of blah, blah, blah. It's easier for me to say it's like a salad bowl. I mean, you put you put reggae in there and jazz and blues and hip hop and and whatever else. It's a little bit of opera, just a little bit. You get some Julie Andrews there. That oh, don't get me singing on the song of music. It's eclectic. It's based on my mood, what I need in the moment. And you really, I'm just like, I'm not, a, I'm not, people say I'm a whirling dervish. You don't want to see this on coffee. I don't drink the, I don't drink coffee. It depends on my mood. It depends on what I need. So he said, neither, does he, he, neither do he, he, Dale doesn't drink coffee either. I'm not anti-coffee. I'm for coffee. I'm, it's all, it's a great antioxidant. I don't want to get any trouble, anybody any trouble here. It's a good thing if you need it. I don't need it. I sometimes want it. What, what do I want? What music do I listen to? When I was a personal trainer, people would ask me, what's the best workout to do? The one you'll do. When's the best time to work out? When you'll do it? It depends on the moment. That's my answer. I love it. It's <laughs> awesome. She is so right on point. She said, what is the best workout? When you do it? I love it. Guys, you gotta love Laura. Come on, give it up for Laura again. I hope she answered your question, <laughs> Dale. Thank you so very much. We also have another question. I saw, was it Tanya? Were you flashing or was it Camille? Okay, Tanya, take it away. One of our GW Warriors. Woo, woo, woo. Hey, hello, everyone. This is such a delight just being a part of this forum. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Um, I wanna thank you for the impact that you're making in the world. And I have a quick question for you. The question is, you have people, and you, you mentioned hope, which is such an important word and an important area where individuals that are struggling, how do you provide that hope for them? You know, you have people who are going through it, they, they, the resources are there, but they just need that help and hope. Validate experience. One of my favorite quotes in the entire world is by Toni Morrison. When your children walk into the room, do your eyes light up? And whenever I start to get down on myself, I hold up this picture. I hope you can see it. This is me when my son is a baby. He starts oh, You guys got to see this beautiful <laughs> picture. Mm -hmm. ah, I hate these black scenes. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Okay, there we go. Dag nabbit. 
Who says that? Elmer Fudd? Dag Nabbit. I'm the only person in the world who says Dag Nabbit because I can get away with it. <laughs> um, I can't get away with other stuff. The thing, you, you validate. And that's all we really want is to be seen and heard and know that we matter. Did you make a difference in the I mean, what would happen in this world? How do I give hope? If I sat down with someone, let's say, how about the people who are in dire straits? How about we start from the home when we're children and you sit down with, just because you're a parent or an older sibling or whatever, and, and, and an authority figure, how about as an authority, as a lead her, you sit down with someone, you say, you know, I need to have a talk with you. I want to thank you for whatever it is. Instead of, well, I need to talk with you about something. We need to talk. Oh God, I need to talk to you about something. I can't express to you how much I appreciate and respect that whatever it was that you did. Why? It didn't necessarily, it benefited me only to the extent that you allowed me to grow from it. I realized what my, my position was, I, I was all in my ego, whatever it is, you gotta put, emphasize the positive. And even when there's that, that standard of, we gotta have a talk, you can start to break that standard so that there isn't apprehension even when the person comes near to you. Cause even before we needed to have a talk, there's that tension, that that vibe, that energy. So I, coming from a place of, to someone who's in that dire strait with open arms, rather than when you see someone on the side of the street and you're closing your arms and you look with contempt or disgust, with empathy, compassion, because in a second, in a second, it could be you. And I mean that mm -hmm. deliberately. Wow. Look at yourself. Would you talk to yourself? Would you, I'm sorry, would you talk to to Anyone else sometimes the way that you talk Tanya, did you feel yourself. that as a three-year-old put a picture of yourself and you're at yes. three or your child at three? Would you do that? Would you say your say to other people the way you talk to yourself so much? And anytime I'll finish with this, anytime someone starts to you feel manipulated or controlled or judged by someone else, imagine what's going on within them. Because they're doing the same thing to themselves, even worse. Mm -hmm. Compassion, empathy. That's powerful. That is so, so powerful. Oh my God. Everybody's flashing their mics in the clubhouse. Gracian, I know your back channel is blowing up. Do we have any other questions? Anyone else would like to pour? Go ahead, Gracian. Yes, I have a question. Okay. Is that Vilma? Yes, it is. Oh, yes, superstar Vilma. All right. Superstar Vilma is all the way in Guadalupe. Take it away. Fabulous. Oh my God. She was great. I have a question for um, Dr. Laura. Um, my question is, okay, there's this friend of mine who she was happy with her child. She thinks that the child is normal, but then the child started to have some strange behaviors, very destructive at school, um, very hyperactive, and um, she brought the child to a doctor to be examined, and the doctor told them that the child is... Um, psychopathic um and my question is and she she, she finds it strange because she, she don't know how to to receive it she does not know how to accept it or she knows she just had a, a, a perfect child a normal child a nice child and all of a sudden the child just started to act up and she's hearing that from the doctor which sounds alienating to her so my question is what would what what cause um uh, why would the doctor come to that conclusion? And the child is just um, five years. Uh, like, what would cause the doctor to reach to that conclusion? And is there any hope for the child? The child still went with his bed. He um, is very strong at school. He he, he gets um, he gets hysterical very easily if you know little things upset him and so on. So, how how can she? deal with that situation. Thank you. I need my mic. Well, thank you. Uh, was it uh, Victoria? That was Vilma. 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 I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I heard about four questions there, so I'm not exactly sure which one to answer. I'm going to re recap what I heard. However, I heard what's um, what's the matter with the child. There's a bunch of questions I could ask on that. How? What could possibly lead the doctor to make that determination? That's a whole other area. Um, how does the mother cope? And then um, what's the best suggestion to do? So I'm not clear about, I would love to have a conversation. This could go on for 15 minutes, respecting the room. Um, could you possibly ask me that one question that I could best answer? And then um, possibly we could talk offline or um, Ms. Renee can and, um, delegate to whom the question goes. Could you ask one of those questions, please? I'm happy to serve. Yes, Velma. So one of those questions, Velma, 
What is most important? Hunger's still with me. Hunger's still with me as a, as a, as a mother. Okay, so basically her child is going through motions and the doctor has given him her the, the, um, the response of saying that diagnosed that he or she is, uh, I would say, crazy. Psychopathic. Yeah, psychopath. Yeah. Okay. So at age of five. So okay, that was my first question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That 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 one. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize, guys. I apologize. Okay. Well, the, the concern that I have is number one, um, I am not a medical doctor. I'm going to preface this with this. I'm very careful to articulate that specifically. Not only I'm not a medical doctor, I'm not your doctor. I'm not a child doctor and I'm not, I'm not clinical. So I have no basis whatsoever to diagnose anything. I can evaluate circumstances for sure. And based on the synopsis of what I heard, so first of all, the questions that I have then would ask, how old is the child? That was the first thing that came to my mind because psychopathology and you're looking in the DSM and the the academic standards and the medical research that indicates what constitutes a diagnosis, I'd be very cautious. I would also actually look at what are the qualifications of the physician, of the doctor? Are they board certified and are they uh, are they pediatricians? Likewise, the child comes into being labeled as what's called the identified patient. Everybody's focusing on the child. The doctor's saying the child's wrong. The parent's coming in saying, what's wrong with my child? The child might have a certain reaction, might have a certain response then there's a difference between causation versus versus correlation. Nothing necessarily causes anything. There could be a correlation, meaning it might be related to something else, which could be indicative of the circumstances, the environment they grew up in, what the interaction was like the, within the family. The family's huge. Um, you know, I'd need to assess if there's any other like, ACEs, which are childhood experiences that are correlated with things like drug abuse, um, imprisonment, divorce subsequently. There's, this is such a phenomenal, this, this whole question right here is basis for a whole web workshop. Seriously, this is a mastermind class, a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was absolutely, I can't answer the question. I need more details. And I just want to say that you are so in tune Velma with um, alert, um, astute, careful, cautious discernment to acknowledge the importance of the sake of the child. That's the number one thing in my humble opinion. Absolutely. I can appreciate just that. Yeah. get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. bones, get a second opinion. So Vilma, definitely follow up with Dr. Dr. Cobb. That was amazing response for what she poured into you. And as she said, that's a deeper dive. That's a master class for sure. Who else uh, would like to pour in? And Gracian, are you there, Gracian? You are doing such a spectacular job. Everyone, please, let's put some hearts, green and yellow hearts in the chat for Gracian because that Gracian Jean, um, um, sorry, Jean, uh, Gracian, Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre, Jean Pierre. She absolutely loved her green and yellow hearts. So please, let's put some of those green and yellow hearts in there. Gracian, thank you so very much for what you do with the, not only GW3, but what you do to impact the lives globally. I know you are right here in the United States, but you are also right over there speaking French with your girlfriend, Miss Purple Two from Canada. So would you like to pour into our one and only Dr. Cobb while she's still here with us? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Miss Renee, and thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and to be part of the GW3 group family. I learned so much from you. You are a go-getter. You are put fire under me, and I thank you for all the ladies that are here on stage also that also pour into me to get me where I am today. So what I would like, and I appreciate Dr. Laura, and I'm so grateful for your story, because when we are vulnerable and we share a story, not only that we help other people see the light, but we also plant a seed within that person. And today, one of my favorite words that you spoke about is hope. Hope for me. 15 months ago, I was my health was affected by a very serious autoimmune disease. And still, I'm recovering from it, but I'm doing much better. Hope was what I hold on to. I used to preach hope to my patients all the time, but not until that I experienced that health challenge that I combined the hope with the belief and the faith. And with that, I create the freedom that I needed to heal my body from the inside out. I thank you for us and, and so grateful for your story because not only 
that today I learned something else about you, but I learned something else that I could share with somebody else to give them hope to move forward. Because without hope, faith, and belief, we cannot create the freedom that we need. So in turn, we could have the gratitude to be here today to say thank you. Thank you for everything, for the little, the smallest thing, and to learn even from the things that are difficult to see the beauty in it, the gratitude in it. Thank you so, so much, Miss Renee. Now I want to just open the floor um, and, you know, say thank you. And anybody else in the clubhouse room have anything to say or any gratitude, anything to pour into Miss Dr. Laura? I'm done speaking for now. Hey, of course, Lanell. Everybody say, woo, 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 Lanell. Yeah, woo. Yeah. Thank you, Lanell. 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 And also providing an answer that's not just a blanket statement, but letting people know that it may be a, a deeper dive. And, and that that I absolutely love. You guys are doing such an excellent job. Everyone looks so beautiful on here. And one of the things I do want to ask in regards to that question that Vilma um, was asking about the little boy, for a child of that age to get that kind of diagnosis, is that usually... And I know you said that you're not anyone's doctor here, but just um, just trying to get an idea. Is that usually a time frame when a doctor can accurately say that a child has this this brevity of a diagnosis? And I'll go ahead and mute myself out. It's Linnell, the soul coach. Man, I would if I weren't if I were. In that situation, I would seriously call out that physician and uh, inquire about credibility and integrity. Absolutely, five years of age, a psychopath. Their brain, their brain hasn't even fully developed. They get another twenty years for their brain to develop. And the environment, the nurture, is so much more important than the nature. Obviously, children who are they're pre um, they're premature or they are born into environments that are under hostile fire or constant abuse and um, neglect, of course, of course, of course, or they're addicted to drugs, of course, those are possibly what might be considered pre, not premeditated, um, pre, existing conditions, the pre-existing conditions, just like anything with health insurance. You got a pre-existing condition, it's gonna be a heck of a lot more difficult for you to get health insurance than if you don't, likely. The same way, same way in like mind, if you have a pre-existing condition or the environment in which you are born, it doesn't mean that you're going to end up that way. It just means that sometimes things are more challenging for sure. It doesn't mean that a person's going to end up that way. I had my first panic attack at five years of age. I'm sitting in my parents' basement watching Rocky and I'm freaking out. I'm five. Nobody's there. I know exactly where I'm at. I'm not at harm. Why? Because I'm thinking about the future. Something that was, does that mean that, that I experience panic attacks today? No, no. Do, does that mean that I experience anxiety? Heck yeah. Does that mean I'm an anxious person? Yeah, I am. However, I know the tools and techniques in order to cope with the trauma that I've experienced in, in, in my childhood. So my point is, is that when imprinting happens, when we're such so young, our brains are like a sponge. I'm 49 and I love my age. Why? Because everything I am is because of what I've experienced. When I'm five, I only have five years. That's my whole life upon which to draw. As 49 year old, I know that one experience that I, had, that I have, I might have had a similar or different experience in my past. So I don't have to only dwell upon or draw from that particular experience to define my identity and to define my environment. I know that this too shall pass. Scripture does not say this too shall remain the same. I know that out of my 49 years of life. A five-year-old, they may be only remember the last year or two of their lives, so they have fewer resources from which to draw upon. So to label, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy often it can. That doesn't mean it causes it. I believe who I am based on what I think others perceive of me. In addition to that, and I'll end with this, this is such a fabulous quote by an uh, American sociologist at the early 1900s by the name of Charles Horton Cooley. It's called the looking glass self. I am not what I think I am. 
I am not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. I'll say that one more time. I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. Meaning that I don't believe who I am is based on what I think because I've been influenced so much. And I'm not really who you think I am because you might be stifling what you really think. I am what I think you think I am. So if you put something out, something out in the universe about me, whether or not you believe it, but it's put to me, I may very well start to believe that about myself. If I'm labeled, you might not think that I'm stupid or I'm an idiot, but you say it anyway. Those bullies, those people who denigrate you, who berate you, who condemn, who criticize, who hold you in contempt, you might not really feel that way. That's why bullies are so venomous. They don't feel that way. They feel out of control, out of power. So they try to gain and wield their power in order to infl inf infiltrate and infect others. So be cautious about the words that others use because it's more often the reality of what they're doing to themselves. It's just a projection. And that's so hard for a five, six, seven, 15, 25, 35, 45 year old. It's experience. And with experience comes wisdom, not knowledge. Oh my goodness. Wasn't that powerful? Oh my, everybody, please show some love to yes. Dr. Laura. That was very, very powerful. Ooh, I, I mean, my goodness. Yeah. I too, Dr. Laura, five years of age, I ran away from home. Okay, I ran away from home at five. They would have thought I was crazy. I already knew inside of me, I wanted to travel and see the world, even at the age five. And it was so funny, my mom, <laughs> she let me do it. You know where I ran away, guys, from? From inside the house to on the porch. Okay, on the porch. <laughs> My dad came home from work. She's like, my dad's like, what is she doing outside? Oh, she ran away from home. Ran away from <laughs> home. So <laughs> it is so true. I did it at the age of five. And lo and behold, back then, it wasn't right to take you to the doctor so get diagnosed or anything like that. Guys, be careful with people, even the doctors, be careful what they speak over you. Please guard yourself, protect yourself. Do not allow anyone to speak negative about you, your family members. Trust and believe. Anytime a doctor say anything to me, you know what I first go and do? I look up what it is they're trying to give me first and foremost. That's the first thing. And then I look for ways of healing myself as well as others. Now, I will say this. We can always look into our diet. Certain foods will give us, a un, I would say, um, un balance a chemical unbalance there we go a chemical unbalance so you have to definitely make sure you do that my daughter not my daughter but on uh, my sister at a very early age we didn't know what was happening to her happening with her but what realized what happened we want to put her through a test and she was so allergic to so many different types of foods milk um shellfish and certain other foods as well and you can either have a reaction, right? Or unfortunately, you can even die from certain foods if you're allergic to them. So that's something, Vilma, you may want to find out certain um, information about what is the child eating. That may be causing them to be hyperactive, you know, just because they're probably eating too much sugar. How many of you guys grew up on Kool-Aid when you were a little kid? I know <laughs> I did, that red Kool-Aid, oh my goodness, had us Somebody said I did too in the clubhouse. That red Kool-Aid had us bouncing off the walls, but we didn't know any better. We were drinking it up. And then I thought, I didn't even know Kool-Aid came in different colors until I went to the summer. Like, you got to be kidding me. It's more than just red Kool-Aid. Okay. So we just <laughs> never know. <laughs> am I making you laugh? I know I am. I'm laughing myself. I'm but sorry. we have to really do our deep dive. That's why I say treat yourself like a seven star luxury brand. And with that, you're going to pay attention to the details. It's all about the details. Don't fall for the okie dokie. Follow up and make sure you do your due diligence. All right. That's from Renee Noor. How about that? Okay. So I want to see if there's anyone else. And we're going to continue on with our conversation. Guys, if you're enjoying this conversation with us, not only are we live in the clubhouse, but we are live on YouTube as well as we're live on Facebook. Let's get some love. I want to flash your mics. Everybody, please flash your mics in the clubhouse. You want to make sure you're filling up the YouTube as well as the Instagram with green hearts. That's what today is all about. 
It's about mental health awareness. So I want you guys to put green hearts everywhere. And because we love our Gracian so much, you put green and yellow hearts because of her as well. Not only in this chat, but I want you guys to also put it on the YouTube as well as our Facebook page. Guys, let's do that. So does anyone else have a question while we're going to be closing out with our amazing Dr. Lore? No, Dr. Lore, I want to know because he talked about your favorite music, right? He talked about what, what is some things that you enjoy doing. What are your hobbies? That's what I would love to know. What are your ways of getting away, finding that self-care time just for Dr. Laura? What do you do? Well, in an ideal world, I'd still be hiking over in the mountains over in Europe. Ooh. And I uh, haven't been in, I'm actually, I'm back in the same subdivision that I live in that I, when I grew up. And after living there, I lived in Germany for eight years. And uh, I love me some mountains. Give me some mountains and some water. I'm with my source. I'm seeing the sun shining off the waves and the ripple in the in the water. And um, that would be idyllic. Um, you know, I love the mountains too. We actually have one of our queens right there in Germany. And we're actually going to be preparing a trip. I've never gone to Germany before. Oh. I know, right? I've never oh tried. my God. I don't have a German last name. Spoken so to Deutsch? Mein Deutsch, mein Deutsch is nicht so gut. Ich spreche ein bisschen Deutsch. Um, I miss it terribly. It's such a fabulous opportunity to realize that the United States doesn't doesn't the center of the universe. Yes. And I mean, it's just it's so great to be immersed in a different culture than mine because it realizes how small and also so significant that I am. And and I re realize that that um you know, that's right. The insignificance of who I am only is to the extent in the words of the Dalai Lama is that. If you think you're too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. Mm. We all matter. Yes. So, and that's the thing about it. It doesn't have to be a mountain. It could be a molehill. It's the intent upon which I saturate myself within that experience. Because what's a mountain in cool weather for me is a desert and, and Las Vegas for another person. It's yeah. all good. And to, um, to answer your question, for me, I believe it's, am I fully engrossed in the moment? Because mm. I spent about 20 years of my life with a major life experience, I almost was able, I almost killed myself, essentially, that I had an eating disorder that almost, I was about five pounds from death because I didn't want to be in me. And just like that song, Rise Up, when that silence isn't quiet, now I saturate myself. I'm just so, I want to saturate and marinate myself with the experience, whatever it is. And so right now, this is perfect. This is where I'm at, where I need to be. Why am I self-soothing? I'm in the experience, I'm in the witness and the presence of some fierce, fabulous, fabulous women and men who allow me to take up space because I didn't want to for so long. Mm. So right now is it? I love it. Living in the moment, living in the now and really appreciating everything that you have. That's something that you have to have gratitude for. You heard it right there from our very own Dr. Laura Cobb. Dr. Laura Cobb, Please allow everyone to be able, how can everyone get in contact with you? Because I know for sure they want not only a slice of you, they probably want the whole pie of you, Dr. Laura, because beautiful, you are not only dropping so much knowledge bombs for us, we just feel so connected with you after this um, this opportunity. So please share with everyone, how can we get in contact with you? How, they, how can they follow up with you? Well, Clubhouse, my new baby. LinkedIn, for sure. That was always my first love. Oh, and my baby now is Clubhouse. Uh, so you can get in touch with me here in the back chat for sure. And uh, also my web, my um, email, you can get in touch with me on Instagram. My, my LinkedIn is posted in my profile. So if you really want to get, you know, if you really want to get in touch with me, take the guide of my profile and take the effort to actually insert some keys instead <laughs> of just clicking on an, a hyperlink, because that actually has served me quite well because I don't get all this stuff. Hey, what's up? That's it. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. That would be excellent. And if you can't do that on LinkedIn because you don't have a, pro, pro, uh, a membership or a, um, you don't have a, a login or a password, whatever, an account, then um, Laura at DrLauraCobb.com. And that's Dr. Uh, Laura at DrLauraCobb.com. Absolutely. It's in my Wait, this is a great time for us because, you know, Dr. Laura, I Everyone know I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana, and we love Lanyap. And I absolutely love rewarding those who pay attention to not only what we're talking about, but even things about what we do with the GW3 family. So for those who have been tuned in with us, you know, I saw Miss Jane from Germany says, hey, I also saw some of the other ladies. Please make sure you're putting the comments into the chat. I see Miss Renee Matthews. Yes, I see you. 
Guys, for the first person who can tell us where Dr. Laura is from, we have a surprise for you. Now, I know you guys was listening very good to her, and you know we always love our little lanyard gifts right here. So for the person who can tell us where Dr. Laura is from, you have to put it in the chat, all right? Place it in the chat, and we want to see who remember where Dr. Laura Cobb is from. Let's see. And then also, let's see, we have others over here. Okay, we have a winner, Dora Dara Conley. I hope I said your name correctly. Dara Connolly, if you're in the room, if you're on the stage, we want to hear from your voice. Come on, winner. Let's give it up for Miss Dara. Woo, 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 woo. Yes. It's important for you guys to pay attention. I absolutely appreciate that. Let's see if we can get her on the on, on the call. Can someone please bring Just Dara up? Awesome. That's cheating because I, I kind of I know Dr. Laura. <laughs> oh, we love that. Well, it's okay. You know Dr. Laura. So tell us about this queen because we're just falling in love with her. Okay. And something about her red hair and these beautiful eyes is just mesmerizing. So share with us a little bit more about why you truly appreciate Dr. Laura. Oh, wow. What a great opportunity, Dr. Laura. Uh, well, we met on Clubhouse. So um, she is real she's one of these people who's real she'll tell you like it is and every room she's been in with me it's been uh so much fun and usually uh we have the we used that we used to do all these rooms together uh and i miss her because she's gotten so busy now but um she's just real she's one of these people who will tell you like it is and is real and always pours into you and gives more than she takes so uh she's a cool chick everybody check her out and uh i'm happy to uh say she's a friend this is Dara. Awesome, Dara. Awesome. So Dara, make sure you please send me your email, I mean your mailing address so we can get this package out to you. Beautiful. So thank you. Um, let's see. Mary Kim, would you like to ask someone in the audience another question? Even if it's a question about the GW3 family, either or. As Mary Kim get herself situated. Yes, what about I, you, Miss Janet? I <laughs> deleted my light put my uh, plug. Um, yes. Okay, okay, so my question is what was oh boy where is janet from <laughs> okay that's cool where is janet from let's see who was paying attention to that where is janet alvarez i'm sorry alvarado where is miss janet alvarado from let's see and we want to get somebody from youtube how about that we want to get somebody that's watching us live right now if you're in the clubhouse, we want you to be watching us because it's a whole different experience, right, Dr. Um, Laura Cobb? We've been on this app for how many years? I mean, it seemed like we've been on it for two years, but it's been a full year, and it's nice to see faces off of the app interaction as well. So again, if you're on the YouTube, as well as if you're on our, um, I guess this is YouTube alongside with Facebook, that's where you're going to have to put your answer because we already got one of the winners right there in the clubhouse. So it'd be great for us to connect with someone online. We have a few people that's online. And if you guys haven't had the chance, please feel free to go right to the top of the link that's in the room and you'll be able to find us right there. Okay. Let's see. All right. Okay. She says Puerto Rico. Yvette Sears is said from Puerto Rico. No. Janet is not from Puerto Rico. Chicago. No. See what happens. It really pays. We make sure it's important for you guys to pay attention. I love this though. <laughs> So no, Janet is not from Puerto Rico. Janet is not from, there we go. She lives in Vegas. And I gather that's kind of like where she claims she's from Vegas. Is that right, Miss Janet? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. So let's give it up for the one and only my cousin, Miss Yvette Searson. Woo! Yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so she will also get a prize as well. I love it. I love it. Well, guys, today is Thankful Thursday. I'm sorry, Thankful Tuesday. And Gracian, 
I want you to go ahead on and share, you know, continue on, you know, blazing the room. It's just been amazing today. If you don't have on the color green, I want you to start wearing green for the entire month of May. Why? Not only is green a powerful color, guys, this is like the money color, but it is the month for mental health, I mean, mental um, health care, mental wellness. And what's so great about this color green? It just looks great on everyone. Would you guys agree? Yes. Woo, woo, woo. Wee, wee. Wee, wee. <laughs> wee, wee. <laughs> yes, yes. So, Miss Janet, what is the question you like to ask the family? <clears throat> What is the question I would like to ask the pan uh clubhouse or <laughs> family? <laughs> family. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what was it that Dr. Laura Cobb mentioned to be grateful for? Oh, oh, that's a, that's kind of yeah, like I'm about to say not a good question. There. There's a lot to be grateful for. Um What picture did, she, did Dr. Laura Cobb show us? Okay, that's a good one. So what picture did Dr. Laura Cobb show us? And you have to be engaged, and that's one of the greatest things about this space. So what was the picture that Dr. Laura Cobb showed us? And I guess this particular winner, I like for the winner to be online because we've been in the clubhouse enough. It's great for, we, for us to have this interaction with those who's watching us. A picture of her son. Woo! Yes! Woo! Yes! 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 I love it. Yes. That cute little face. Yes, such a beautiful face. Such a beautiful face. Uh, so there you have it. We have Miss Linnell alongside with Miss Yvette Searson and then Dana right there in the clubhouse. Oh my goodness. Gracian. You know what, beautiful? We are on fire over here. You have Mr. Core Elements. You have Tyrone Poole. You have Ms. Lena alongside with V. I see Ms. Carmel. Oh my goodness, guys. She's another one of our newest GW3 warrior. Woo! Yes! Woo oh Welcome! Woo you have a full house over there. You have Ms. 10X, Ms. Maria herself. As well as you, I know, I see you over there. And you have Miss Eddie. Miss Eddie is going to be doing our one of our prayer warriors today. She's going to be closing us out with prayer. I see Miss Sear. What's going on, Miss Sear? How are you doing? Okay, Sear must have stepped away. That's no problem. You know, I always say be ready. Just be ready. So, Miss Yvette Searson, you got the answer right. How are you doing, beauty? Marvelous, enjoying these interviews. You guys are doing a fabulous job today. Yes, GW3 for what? Yes. For live. Woo, 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 woo. I know that awareness is one of my favorite topics. Mental health awareness is one of our favorite topics. Is there something you want to pour into the conversation with the one and only Dr. Laura Cobb? One of the last things she mentioned, she was talking about the imprint that early diagnosis can make on, on children. And, and it is so true. And I just wanted to say, you know, one of the things that is very helpful uh, to couples, for instance, when you go to have couples counseling, it's a good idea to just pay out of pocket even if your insurance covers it. Because, you know, the therapist has to... Um, you know, you're coded in the MIB, the, the Medical Information Bureau. You are coded as having some type of diagnosis because when they enter their notes, they have to diagnose you as something. You know, it may be mild depression, may be mild anxiety, but anxiety is anxiety. Depression is depression. And then, you know, later on, of course, you go get insurance and it says that you've got some mental illness. So I just wanted us to be careful how we um, handle some of those things because, like she said, sometimes it makes an imprint and it is not the fact of the, of the matter. It is just a, a temporal thing. It just lasts for a little while. So especially with children, you know, don't get them diagnosed so early. Some of those things you can do, self-help. And I, 
I, I put those resources in the chat a few times already um, where you can get some self-help mental health awareness resources to help you with your children and your loved ones. So let's just not be so quick to get diagnosis. Not that diagnosis is not important, but we just have to be very careful how we do it. But if you pay out of pocket, that's the trick. If you pay out of pocket, um, you know, you can curtail it being in your medical information bureau report. This is even serious. I just want to give you those little tips. Absolutely wonderful. Go ahead, Dr. Laura. I was just going to say that I, I absolutely and oftentimes children, families, I'm sorry, families, couples, uh, anyone relationships, they're they're the symptom of the problem, especially when it comes to family counseling or therapy, um, family um, well-being. And that because of that, especially when they're so young, they have to put a code in. And unfortunately, that that code that can be quite st stigmatizing. It can be a label that 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 especially doesn't. And it, yes, it can help hold through to the. In identified patient throughout the years, the the more um, definitely and moreover, and what I love about that is it's the foundation of if it then becomes that self fulfilling prophecy that they're not the problem, they're just a symptom. It's the family unit, it's the couple relationship. It's not that there's something wrong with this person. It's that the environment in which the person lives is not conducive to understanding that it takes time to listen. That's why it's called active listening. It's hard. What do you want me to do? Listen. What do you want me to do? Listen. I want to do something. Listen. It's active to do that and then really get to the root of the problem. And it's so unfortunate that, yeah, there has to be some coding sometimes. And it's the system. Um, but there are ways. And I, I want to honor what was what was recommended and what was just said as well, for sure. Thank you so Be cautious very much. with your words. Thank you so much. Yes. Absolutely. Can I, can I speak to that point? Who's speaking? Sincere, Dr. Sonia. Hi, Sonia James. Hey, yes, this will be really quick. Um, but I'm, I'm waiting for you, though. I'm go ahead. No, you. please, go ahead. Um, she really blessed me. Um, more and more, I realized uh, what God has really done every day. And I didn't want the day to go by that I didn't get some gratitude. Right? Okay. So I listened to Dr. Laura speak about homelessness. And I remember when my child uh, was murdered. And uh, I roamed for like five years, and all I wanted to do was die, you know. And now that I'm, of course, older, and, and the Lord has just really blessed me to be able to help other people with um, different things uh, concerning that, whether the person was uh, murdered or uh, whatever the process was, I just have gratitude, you know, that I'm here to hear someone else say um what they've gone through, you know, because homelessness is something to recover from. But it makes me grateful for everything that I have because there was a time that I didn't even have my mind, you know. So, and the Lord raised me up and he blessed me to to be able to do things and minister to people and, and, and help people and meet you guys, right? Mm -hmm. Just being on the platform. So I just want to thank her for sharing her story. And I want to thank her for, you know, um, just seeing another person empowered, you know, I know what it is. You can't just like tell it all, but I just wanted to say thank you for her sharing. And I wanted to thank um, God for just having a platform and I'm just grateful and, and, and have gratitude for the fact that I can help other people. Um, as to the five-year-old, yes, I went through something at five years old. Mine had to do with, um, someone that was an older person. I knew that something was wrong with him by the way he tried to kiss me. You know, and then there was alcohol everywhere, you know, so I'm, I'm agree with her that, you know, sometimes an environment can cause certain things. I'm speaking to myself. I'm not a doctor. I'm speaking of what I um, saw happen to me down the road, you know, and it takes uh, great courage to step into places in your own mindset, you know, in your own life. Um, and uh, I, I agree with her. You know, um, you definitely want to make sure that totally get the right help when it comes to that um but i just wanted to say that and i love the conversation i thank god for being here and bless you queen oh thank you so very much sierra thank you so very much well i want to say this to all of our viewers out there for everyone that's listening not only in the clubhouse okay we want to make sure we're connecting with you 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 and you all over the world if no one has told you lately I am proud of you. I want you to know that we are proud of you. We have to stay encouraged. 
We have to stay engaged with the right people who bring the right energy, the right vibration around us. That's something that we have to do. It's a choice that we make as well. And as we're going through this journey called life, never allow anyone to take your spotlight away. You are in control of that. And for those little youth that are going through these moments in their times as well, guys, when you see a situation, when you see a problem that's happening, let's do our part. Let us do whatever we can to help those who are voiceless. Let's do whatever we can to help those who can't help themselves. And even if it means just impacting one person a day, let's do that. I want you to turn your smile up so big today. I want you to do that. It's all about what it is that you're grateful for. And we woke up today. So it's encourageable for you to go and help put five smiles on other people's faces right now. Five of them. Because as we said, we're in the moment right now. And I always want you guys to think about what will be my next step once I leave from this call. What's going to be my next action? How am I going to make an impact to this world? We're going to reach 1 million this year. You better believe that. And we want you to be right there with us on this journey. We have control over what we do. We have freedom over how we do things. And if you need help, please reach out to the Global Women Wealth Warriors, the GW3 Global Club. We want to hear from you today. We have all of the amazing global tribe leaders that's willing to come together to help transform your life. Not for a moment, not for a season, but for a lifetime, for a lifetime. We've all have a unique story. If you need help, don't sit over there and not come to us because we want to help you. We want to help you win. And when all of us winning, that's where it's the sweet spot for us. It's not about how one person win or about me, 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 where we have we, we, we to support in this world. All in agreement? Say yes, yes. Yes, yes. Wee wee, yes, yes. 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 This Cajun girl is ready to go. We are on fire. This is day two. And trust and believe, we've had things to work towards slowing us down, but we don't have any obstacles in our way. We see very clear. And every day we're going to show up from 12 to 2. That's right, 12 in the afternoon to 2 p.m., pouring in this love, this light. We want you to take action after we finish with our calls because you need this in your life. You know why we know you need it? We see what it's doing to you, baby. What? We, yes, yes, I hear the guys over there. Yes, yes. And it's important for us to keep showing up for each other. So we love you. We absolutely love you. Keep going. Oh, I love it. Keep going because you know what? You didn't come this far just to come this far. So without further ado, we want to say thank you so very much, Dr. Laura Cobb. We want to say thank you so very much, Mary Kim Farkas. We want to say thank you so very much, Miss Janet Alvarado, who I truly, truly am looking forward to meeting you this year alongside with Dr. Laura Cobb. We know every time we come into this space, we can't just not, we can't leave without giving God his praises and his glory. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our prayer warrior, Miss 80. Miss 80, 80, 80, all the way with that beautiful accent in London as she closes out in prayer. My father and my God, we just want to say we are We're grateful for life. We're grateful for all the things that you are doing in our life and through our lives. Father, we want to say that we know that you have been present with us. You've heard all of our conversations. And we know that even as we reflect on the things that you have 
shared in our heart. But Lord, we will not just be hearers of the word, but we will also be doers. Your word tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. And that therefore, we need to get wisdom. And with it, we must get understanding. So we're praying about some of the things, oh God, that we have discussed. We've spoken about health. We pray for wisdom, Lord, to know the right things that we need to do, even in our health, in our minds, in our bodies, and our souls. We're praying also, Father, for wisdom for our businesses. We pray, Father, Lord, even as we do not lean on our own understanding, but as we acknowledge you in all our ways, that you, Father, Lord, will direct our path. We're praying for wisdom, Father, in our finances. It is you that's given us the power to create wealth. And so we're praying, Father, that we will use the resources that you give unto us in the best possible way so that we can not only be a blessing to our family, but for the wider community, Father. For this is the desire of the community that we will impact others across the globe. We're praying, Father Lord, even for our own selves, that you will cause us, Father, to grow grow in every dimension. We're praying, Father, Lord, for unity in our midst, that even as we come together each day, that we will grow not only in the unity, but the love that you have shed abroad in our hearts. We're praying, Father, Lord, even for progress in all that we do. We're praying, Father, Lord, that you will use us for your glory. Father, thank you for Dr. Laura, for all that she has shared and poured into our hearts. We pray, Father, the Lord, for even greater things for her and her vision. We pray for Rene, Lord, even as our leader. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to give her more anointing, more grace, oh God, even as she leads us. And even as she, Father, enters into different realms that you have ordained for her even before the foundation of the earth. Lord, we thank you for this time. We give you glory, Father, Lord, and we will yet testify of the great things that you will do in our midst. Father, we say thank you in advance. We give you the glory and we give you the praise. For in Jesus' name, we have praise. And let the congregation say, Amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. On fire. Yes. Amen. 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 Guys, if you haven't followed the Global Women Wealth Warriors on YouTube, we highly encourage you to do so. If you haven't followed the Global Women Wealth Warriors on Instagram, we highly encourage you guys to do so as well. We're so grateful for you tuning in today. We look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. Thank you, and bye for now. Bye. Bye. Big hugs. Bye.